So, before you hit the thumbs down button and say Airsoft GI sucks, hear me out. Hey you guys, my name is Cisco and thank you for stopping by today. I got a little bit of a different type of video. I kind of have a script here. I'm going to talk about the Battle Royale in Airsoft and why I think realistically it can't happen the way it's been portrayed. So if you follow kind of Airsoft media, you might have seen floating around a month ago or a month or two ago, a article of an anonymous millionaire who is trying to find an events coordinator to set up a large scale battle royale airsoft game on a private island. So in the article, it states that, um, like I said, 100 players are gonna go onto a private island compete in a three-day tournament. Each day will have 12 hours of consistent gameplay. Uh, players will be equipped with airsoft guns uh, wearing touch-sensitive body armor, uh, and the last per uh, person standing will win 100,000 pounds. Battle Royale-style video games have gained a lot of popularity within the past year or so. Basically, it's a single player or a team of players uh, fighting against each other in a designated um, arena until the last person is standing. Games like PUBG, Apex Legends, Fortnite uh, are kind of leading the way in this style of gameplay right now. All right, so I think three things that are kind of needed to get something like this set up would be a lot of airsofters. Um, you know airsofters, they like to go big or go home, so at least 100 players, I would say, would be a good event. A very large area to play, and last would be just a set of rules that everyone can understand and won't ruin the experience of the game. So we've seen a lot of YouTubers and airsoft actually do Battle Royale style games. Even we have done uh, the Hunger Games videos, uh, link right here. The reason that they worked is because they had a smaller group in a reserved private area with their own resources. They provided everything, they set out the rules themselves, and everyone was in agreement to what they were doing. Uh, with this particular scenario, here are a list of reasons why I think it's just not going to work out. So number one is uh, how would they determine who gets to play? Would you need to pay uh, to participate or would it be a randomized selection out of like, so many people. Uh, if you do have to pay, what would the cost be? I think going to a private island would be pretty expensive. The millionaire, the anonymous millionaire said uh, that they were gonna be the ones to host it, but will they fund everything, including the cost for said players to go and participate? The touch sensitive armor seems like a failure point. Will it be able to determine the BB hit or is it just like, and it would activate, you know? Um, if you trip and hit a bush or run to a tree, will that cause the armor to activate as well? I feel like in Airsoft, everyone is, you know, it's an honor-based game. Uh, when you get hit, you call it. Another point that I have written down is, uh, there's a lot of money on the line. Will that will that cause people to cheat? Will, will people, like, I, I would like to believe that everyone has a good heart and will uphold their honor and integrity, but that's life-changing money. And I, I wouldn't hold it against myself to cheat. If, if it hit my arm and my vest didn't light up, hey, fair game, you know what I'm saying? Honestly, there's just too many things to consider in this particular scenario laid out for us that it would just fail um, in multiple ways to operate unless enough money is thrown into the situation to fix everything. If you can develop, or if someone has developed a touch sensitive body armor that will be able to determine whether it is a BB impact or, or other types of touch, it would, it would, I would assume it costs a lot of money. And providing that to the 100 players, whatever X amount uh, the armor cost plus uh, or times that by 100 people, then are you gonna bring your own guns? Uh, are they gonna provide it? What style of battle royale is it going to be? Are you gonna start off with a backpack full of miscellaneous stuff like the original battle royale movie? Or will it be just like the video games where you're running around the island looking for stuff? Personally, if I had to bring my own gun to the, to the field and have it tossed somewhere, I would be very upset. I wouldn't even bother participating. So with this event in mind, I think that Airsofters as a whole would be able to create a better experience rather than just some random guy trying to throw the idea out there. 
I think we would be able to work out a way to make it smoother and uh, you know just be overall fun as a whole experience. So I came up with a list of rules. This is literally the whole damn page of how I think a game should run. This is kind of just like a base that I typed up really quick. Um, let me see if you guys think that this would be a good start. So for me personally, I would uh, I would make it an event that everyone can pay for. Um, having it a randomized selection and limited to the 100 people, kind of unfair. So uh, just giving it a, uh, a day like an event like a like a milsom event or like a bb wars event uh something that you could just participate and have fun and not expect a winning would just make it a little bit more enjoyable the first thing that you'd have to do is find the biggest field in whatever area you're trying to to host the event like say if you're in florida whatever the biggest field out there is out here we have wildlands and se village they have really big areas um that could host uh, a large amount of people. I feel like those would be uh, very good places to start with this uh, style of game. Have a 100 player capacity, uh, either a free for all, literally 100 people against each other, or a, uh, a set of four man uh, teams totaling out to 25 teams total. Everyone can bring their own guns, a primary and a secondary, with one magazine each. No plate carriers, no chest rigs, Basically nothing that can hold any magazines or any storage capabilities. Uh, only a belt mounted dump pouch and a speed loader. Uh, the reason for this is every player should be inspected before they get onto the field. And um, just to make sure that they aren't sneaking on any extra ammo or, or you know, trying to gain their own advantage. And then once they get onto the field, each player is given 100 BBs. Scattered across the field, there would be, you know, little ammo cans full of BBs, accessories, maybe grenades and stuff, you know. Uh, just to make the game a little bit more diverse and then also I thought maybe you can do a med kit system where you can have white bands where in the ammo cans so if you get shot you can tie one on yourself really quick and that'll be a revive and the way that you could limit that would be there would be specific uh, a specific number of bands and they're all numbered so when the game is over, you go count how many how many bands there are, and then you'll see if anyone cheated or not. Refs would be across the field and around the border of the field. This way, um, they can just monitor the game as a whole. Every 10 minutes, uh, the refs at the border will move inwards from the border, shrinking the field. This will force players to move inwards um, to get closer to each other to you know accelerate the gameplay. Something that wasn't listed, I mean, of course, uh, like nothing was set in stone about rules there, but I see this, if you do this like every 10 minutes, uh, six times, that's about an hour's worth of gameplay. Um, you could fit multiple games in one day versus just having the same 100 people play a three day event that's going on for 12 hours each day. So let's see here. Where did I leave off? There's so much typing. <laughs> Why did I do this? Okay, so as the uh, border shrinks, once the the refs stop, anyone that's outside of the border that tries to go back in, if a ref sees them, they're, they're just automatically disqualified. The ref will see them and they'll be like, yo, you're out, you know, go back to the staging area. But if the player can outrun the refs um, while they are moving um, and make it back inside the, the designated area, I guess the circle, they would still be a part of the game and they'd still be allowed to play. This would imitate the the storm or the barriers that go up in the battle royale style games where if you're in the area and the storm comes by you um, you immediately start losing health because you're in uh, like a dead zone basically depending on on the size of the field will of course depend on how close they should move like i said if they moved uh, a designated six rings toward the center at the sick like at the very last movement if they condense into about a CQB sized field, it literally forces everyone into a fight, whoever's left. If they don't get eliminated uh, by other players beforehand, or if they just don't die in the dead zone. Like I said, this will give about one hour's worth of gameplay and you can run multiple games in a day, uh, especially if you do it uh, for a couple days um, as an event. I feel like this would be a more successful event. Not only it running much smoother, like I said, it'll be a little bit more cost, uh, cost effective because everyone, you know, they could drive. Like if, if it's a local event, um, you can go. Versus a private island, 
in my mind, I think, oh, I'm gonna have to fly to, I'm gonna fly to wherever um, the the boat is gonna be, or I'm gonna, and then I'm gonna have to get on the boat. I'm gonna have to take a, a plane to to land on the private island. That sounds like just a lot of money. And then, like I said before, if you have to provide your own guns, having to travel with those as well, it just seems a little too complicated for me. So this is my personal opinion. Uh, it does not reflect the opinions of Airsoft GI. But if an event like what is uh, listed online on a million <laughs> an anonymous millionaire uh, if that is able to happen I would love to participate in it I think it'll be really fun it's just a matter of getting the rules set and making it uh, easy to work what do you guys think of the rules that I kind of listed out um, I was kind of just throwing ideas out there and I thought that what I had listed would be the easiest way to make an event happen um, what would you improve upon what would you change what you what you like what you didn't like uh, let me know in the comments below uh, I am replying to everybody so yeah see you guys next time thank you guys for watching Peace.